What? I'm always sideways. Hold on, get, get the camera going. I guess I'm going. <laughs> there you are, sideways. Again. Um, okay, hold on a second. Now you're normal. Brad. I hear you. You hear me? Can you hear me? I don't hear you. You can't hear me? Wait. Oh, try that. Can you hear me? Wait, why can't I hear you? Uh, it says I don't I'm hear on. You. Wait, maybe he's muted. Hold on a second. Mute, no, Kurt, no. Mm -mm. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Hey, try that. Can you hear me? Jay. I don't hear you, bud. Oh, you look like you guys are both muted for some reason. Can How about now, now, Phil? Can you hear me now? Hear me now. Hear me now. Hear me now. Yeah, we got you good. Okay, I got you good now. All right, guys, how are you? Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, uh, going into the pit with me here for Alamo True Metal in San Antonio. What a pleasure speaking with Kurt Dimer and his guitarist Phil X. How are you guys today? Hey, what's up? Doing great, Jay. <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you so much, and we're looking forward to you guys uh, playing a string of Texas shows here. In about two week, two and a half weeks, in particular, the San Antonio show at the Aztec Theater. You guys are returning Thursday, September 15th, opening for Tesla, uh, the same venue where you opened for Jeff Tate uh, last November, a show that I had the pleasure of covering and being in the photo pit for. So it'll be my second time seeing you guys. Uh, we're going to cover the tours. We're going to cover the music in this conversation. I thank you for going into the pit with me here. Uh, Kurt, just start off by telling me your mindset and the band's mindset as you're about to go on basically, I believe, your third major tour in less than a calendar year, even almost six or eight months. Jay, you're correct, man. That's awesome. Yeah, we're that, like you said, Jeff Tate last year, Aztec Theater, great night. I remember it very well, and uh, and I can't wait to be back there, man. And uh, we've I've got a lot of people reaching out to me asking over the last few months, when are you coming back? to san antonio and now here we are so same venue and uh we're ready man i've got a few new things for you guys and uh we're continuing to tour on war card rock hard but uh new album coming here soon full length and uh we can't wait to be there brother it's uh, a lot of good fans down there on the ingbe tour which you, you mentioned with this is our third tour that was our second one we only made it to dallas to the granada theater so we didn't get back to San Antonio. So we're really looking forward to it. And Phil, how about you? How do you feel about coming back with Tesla and um, giving it another go around here in San Antonio? I, I'm gonna jump out on a limb here and say, this is a better fit for us with Tesla, I think. And uh, I'm excited because they, they do really good business these days still. And I love the Aztec, man. I was walking around taking pictures of that place. I mean, it's got to have uh, an amazing history. You know, I, I'm, I'm that guy. I'm, I even when I, no matter what, who I'm touring with, I, I see a venue and I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I walk around and check it out. It's kind of cool that way. Um, yeah. The uh, being out again with Kurt is going to be so much fun. We're, we're, we're bringing on a new song that hasn't been released. And uh, we, we kind of love doing that, but, you know, we, we kind of, everybody kind of jumps on our backs and, and is like, hey, hey, can you guys cool it? Can you do songs that people can buy? Can you do guys, come on, people, we need to do songs that people can stream. And we're like, no, we got a new tune, we got to do it. <laughs> it's kind of like, <laughs> I compare it to, um, when you listen to a 1979 bootleg of Van Halen playing the Pasadena Civic Center. And- I have that on my Yes. <laughs> they're, they're doing somebody get me a doctor that isn't out yet. You know what I mean? That's right. what I that's what I compare it to. We get excited about yeah. new material. 
Kurt, can you tell me how, um, you know, obviously you're still playing shows where every city you're getting a bulk of fans who are seeing you for the first time. Can you kind of explain um, the differences in the tours here between the three tours and what Jeff Tate did for you in kind of breaking you and exposing your music to the masses? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been a great kind of evolution. It, you know, Jeff kind of, we, we met a summer a year ago and when we came together and we all agreed his management and mine for him to be on my song Burn Together, which is on the Work Hard Rock Hard EP and the music videos out on YouTube. We agreed to do the video. We agreed to for him to be on that song that I, I chose burn together because I thought it was a great way to showcase my unique type of voice to his fantastic, incredible, iconic voice, you know, and kind of play off each other. And then we agreed to do this tour. And for our first tour as a band, as a, as a family, as a team, to be able to go out with Jeff Tate was incredible. And I will never forget him for that. He kind of became an early mentor, an uh, early iconic mentor from the, you know, the rock world for me being a newcomer. And I will never forget that. Then I'm out doing the Stowaways show on Shiprocked, which I was fortunate enough to be an all-star Stowaway vocalist with like Nita Strauss and Bumblefoot and people. I'm like, okay, what, what the hell's going on here? to me and i did that and on while i'm on that cruise i get a message from ingbe's uh, booking agents that they want me to hook my management up with them because ingbe's getting ready to go out and needs an opener well another challenging opener you know how are we going to play to ingbe fans who want to come see him shred and we're like this unique harmonizing you know uh, hooky rock band and uh, we took on the challenge like we always do. And we went out and won over more fans. And that went great as well. And uh, we played right before Ingbe and Jeff on both tours. And then we just keep working and we keep building. And next thing you know, the my booking, we now we have a booking agent. And the booking agent uh, says, hey, we, Tesla would like to go out for uh, on a six-night run in Texas with you. Direct support. I mean it's just it just keeps getting better and uh not that those first two weren't but we just keep getting these opportunities in a sh less than a one year span because our jeff tate thing wasn't until september of last year so we're very blessed and uh, and very fortunate that jeff and ingbe gave us those opportunities so now and tesla heard nothing but they're a great great group of guys i think phil's very good friends with a couple of the guys in tesla and uh, they're all stoked and they're, we're stoked. They're even hitting my socials, liking stuff. So that's very cool. And uh, yeah. I can't wait to get it out and show everybody what we can do. And I think you'll notice uh, the evolution in our band, even at the Aztec. If you liked the show last year, I think you'll love this even more. So yeah. totally looking forward to it. Um, the, out of the three tours, the Ingve tour was the only one that didn't hit San Antonio. Like you mentioned, that was uh, Dallas, the last night of the tour, I believe, was the closest it got to here. But that tour struck me for two reasons, Kurt. Um, one that you've already touched on, and I'm sure you're probably <laughs> sick of hearing the phrase that it was like a contrast in styles. Of course, your band with Ingves and how uh, unique of a pairing that may have been. But the second reason was the opening act on that tour was San Antonio's own Jessica. And I'm, is there a band that I've covered, even Arturo, the bassist and uh, side vocalist? I've been covering him since his previous band when he was like 15 years old in 2008. Oh. So uh, I've known that band for a very long time. So I'm wondering what your impressions were of Jessica Hill and, and um, did you have much interaction with them during that tour? Well, first and foremost, uh, shout out to all of them and Jessica Hill and they are great people and they were nothing but uh, awesome to be around. Um, Arturo, very outgoing, uh, lovely person. The whole band was. They actually became big fans of us, and they would go and watch our show every night after they played and said they loved our vibe. They would come into town. You know, we were just listening to Hero on the way here. We were listening to Work Hard, Rock Hard, and they can't wait for us. They, they said, we can't wait for you to come back to San Antonio, so I hope they're at the show because I would love to see them all again. But uh, great people, wish them nothing but the best, and a great band. They came in, they were pro, they did their job, 
and then they've fully supported everybody else on the tickets. So really, really um, enjoyed getting to know those folks and they're great people. And they're funny. Bill, did you have, uh, yeah, did you have any particular impressions of Gyro and his guitar playing? You he's crazy. I mean, he, uh, I wish, uh, I wish I would have had more time to just chill out with those guys because we were always traveling and then getting to towns at different times and stuff like that. Um, and then I saw this one cover that they did of I Am the Viking. And I was like, oh shit, he's got that too. So it was pretty amazing. I didn't know they had an Ingve uh, tribute band that they do sometimes. It was pretty amazing. So it only made sense. But it was funny. I blew my amp one night and uh, let me his amp to finish the set. <laughs> he was literally putting it on the video. I'm like, I need your amp. He's like, take it. It was, it was, pretty, it was pretty awesome. But they're funny, man. It was really cool um, catching the vibe with those guys. It was really great. Yeah, awesome. And Kurt, yeah, let's let's get into the music, Kurt. I'm gonna include uh, your videos uh, with the article version of our conversation today when I put this all together uh, in advancing the Tesla show. So I know you've got videos for Naive. You mentioned Hero. You mentioned that Jeff Tate was in your song and video for Burn Together. Um, and of course, you got the Pink Floyd cover, Cigar. Any particular favorite that you have out of the videos that you've done, and any particular stories you want to share about any of the songs on the record? Well, I have a cigar video was the first one we put out. And that'll always be very fond of my heart because that's the video. The first day Phil and I met, we shot that video. And if we wouldn't have gotten together to shoot that video and I couldn't have gotten to know what kind of a human being he was and he couldn't have gotten to know me on the human level, we might not be talking to you today. So that that was a very special video to me. I love Naive because I love the song Naive and it's part of a trilogy as is burned together. So there's still a prequel video coming out on a future song that nobody's heard yet that ties those two together and it makes it three in a row. So I, I love Naive just because I love the song. It's one of my favorite songs we've done together. Um, as far as Hero, I love because I love the message that we're trying to portray that everybody, even you, me, anybody else in everyday life can be a hero at any given time, especially the state the world is in now. But we're also thanking all the heroes that are obvious to us in the world, being our you know, first responders, frontline workers, military, all the men and women who sacrifice their lives for us. So that's very uh, important to me that people get that and feel that in their hearts. The probably the video that means the most to me that you didn't mention is my dad that we put out on Father's Day. And I wrote that song one night, like 10 minutes on my back porch and pretty much it's lyric for lyric, the original way I wrote it uh, for my father who I lost in 2016, but he's with me every day. I play every day of my life. He's like my guardian angel. And that one's probably the closest to me because once the world hears that song, it can touch anybody if you've lost a loved one, whether it be your dad, your mom, um, a sibling, a best friend, whoever. And it hopefully it touches everybody because it's from my heart, my dad's heart to all of you. So that's probably the most special one to me. Awesome. Uh, Phil, can you kind of tell me how you and Kurt came together? Because a lot of people on the surface might think, oh, man, you're in a world mega band with Bon Jovi. You're touring the, touring the world. You probably have enough going on with that one band. How and why would you hook up? I know Chris Lord Algie, I believe the producer for the record is kind of how you, how the two of you came together. But from your perspective, Phil, he just kind of explain what drew you to Kurt and to be a member of his band as well. Well, I mean, I, it's true. You know, I, I have, uh, I do play with Bon Jovi and I also have my band Bill X and the Drills and, uh, I mean, I've, I've worked with so many artists in the studio as well. It's just, it's just, uh, it's really hard to find something unique these days and something unique that actually, that speaks. And, and that's what happened with Kurt. I heard his voice and I thought, wow, I've never done anything like this before. And it just seemed to, to make sense for another canvas in my life, which, you know, I'm a creative guy and uh, having something that 
that stood out as something that I've never done before. It just seemed like the next step for me. And I mean, not, nothing else is going away. I mean, <clears throat> it just happens to be, uh, uh, <clears throat> it happens to be very uh, idealistic right now, um, or ideal, sorry, that Bon Jovi isn't that busy. You know, like it's, uh, and Bon Jovi, they they slow down even before the pandemic, instead of going out for two years to support a record, they decided to do like three or four months a year. So I thought, well, that leaves a, a window for other stuff. And and timing wise, the current thing made a lot of sense too. But I mean, I, I just wanted to be a part of something and even in the studio as a start. But when we started writing together, you just I just put more of my heart into it and it became a passion thing. So when he said, you got to be in the band, I was like, man, I don't know. And he's no, you got to be in the band. I was like, yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't take much twisting of your arm it sounds like huh? thank, thank you <laughs> you know like i mean i want to do stuff that i believe in i, I really believe in yeah. awesome. so well give me a uh, phil if you can give me a blast from the past here go back about 30 years obviously you spent a couple of years in triumph but do you also have any member uh, memories of playing san antonio with aldo nova like in the early 90s yeah dude i I remember, um, yeah, I do remember. The 90s was a long time ago for me. <laughs> but <laughs> I guess for everyone. But the, I don't. I forget if it was El Paso or San Antonio that I actually fell through the stage. That might have been El Paso. Um, mm-hmm. Literally was jumping up around and jumping up and down. I literally fell through the stage. The, like the stage collapsed beneath, beneath me. But uh, I don't remember where we played in San Antonio. I remember in Houston, we did the Houston Summit because it was a rock and roll auction. And I remember a girl there, but I, <laughs> I, I don't remember San Antonio. I do remember San Antonio with Triumph in 92 or 93. And we did this big, and Pat Travers opened for us. So I've always been a huge Pat Travers fan. fan and that was my first Triumph show. And the funny thing about that was I was in a cover band when I was 15 and we, we used to cover a uh, little Texas shaker, which, which was about San Antonio or a chicken San Antonio. So, I mean, I always go back to San Antonio, man. San- and also was a huge fan of uh, um, Ted Nugent back then. And, and then one of the, Cuts on Gon- Double Life Gonzo was San Antonio, and he's screaming San Antonio, San Antonio. <laughs> and I since have become great friends with Derek St. Holmes, and we talk about that yeah. live track from San Antonio too. I mean, San Antonio is just a rock and roll town, man. And getting to play and there again, yeah. and, and getting to play there again, and getting to play there at the Aztec Theater again is exciting because, I, like I said, I walked into that place and I was like, wow, this place is awesome. So I'm excited to play there again. And then we'll be hanging again. Too. How do you pronounce yes. Is it Nanda or Nanda? Nanda. Nanda, like, like Rhonda? Help me, Rhonda? Because yes, you could have could have been Panda or Rhonda. I had to ask. I get both all the time. It's no problem. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've, I've had a couple of friends. And I look forward to meeting you guys at the show in a couple of weeks uh, and shaking your hands and, you know, saying thank you for this face to face. But yeah, I've had a couple of friends, Phil, tell me that they have pictures of you from the Aldo Novo show circa 1991. And I believe it was at Sneakers. Does that ring a bell? Sneakers. I got so excited my phone fell. Dude, I don't think- <laughs> Sneakers. I totally remember Sneakers. Now nah, you remember, there you go. That's awesome. Is Sneakers awesome. still- and, and you're saying- yeah, uh, no, it's it's uh, it's long gone. Um, I've only been living here since 2005, so I relied on a couple of my uh, classic friends who have uh, been here most of their lives to tell me that one. But um, but are you saying, Phil, that your first show with Triumph was in San Antonio as well? Yes, it was. But that was, uh, Very that nice. was an outdoor festival. Not a, not even a real festival. It was just one outdoor. Uh, it was it wasn't a stadium. It must have been the shed. But I just remember being in a band when I was a kid, opening up for Pat Travers, and then it came full around to him opening up for us. So that was, that was pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting because I, 
it was the same kind of thing where I had to fill in for a guy who was a major part of the band. And uh, so that was an interesting concept. I mean, I don't know why that keeps happening in my life, actually. <laughs> hey, Kurt, uh, since, like I said, the Tesla show will, will bring a lot of people who will be checking you out for the first time. Can you tell them uh, about the rest of your band? Who do you have on drums, bass and keys? Yeah, man, I, I'd love to. And uh, I just th thought of something when you had asked me what the difference is now. I, did you even know we were opening for Jeff Tate when we were at the Aztec a year ago? No, no. Yeah. And uh, in fact, um, yeah, go ahead and tell uh, what you were going to say. But yeah, that was kind of a surprise. that day. You asked me for the differences and a lot of that happened because they were like la a lot of later additions to it. And the, promo the promoters had already promoted different, you know, because of all these makeups and stuff for people, which has been a challenge for promoters and stuff. But now with Tesla, we're out there. People know it's we're going to be there. We're direct support. So that's a major difference as well. So that, that's something I wanted to point out to you. But yeah, no, my band, of course, my lead guitarist and vocalist, Phil X, you know, will be uh, unleashing himself on everybody the way he likes to do it, the way Chris says, Phil, you be you, Kurt, you be you. Um, I'm front man and uh, the crazy man on stage. And then on bass, we have Brendan H Hengel. And how he, the story behind Brendan is Christian Sturba was our original bass player when we tour. And he just had a baby and it's always family first with us. And he's got other priorities in his life. But when we were on the run with Ingve, uh, uh, Christian came down with a, the a case of the COVID and Brendan was our merch guy, but he played in Trapped. He's a multi-instrumentalist. He was doing merch and he ended up, we, we rehearsed one day on a day off and then he played bass in like four of our shows while Christian was isolated and uh, did such a phenomenal job. So when Christian asked if you know he could depart, it was, I, I called Phil, I, th I go, I think the uh, natural choice for bass is Brendan. We, we knew him, he had toured with us, we all get along. So he's our bass player. Uh, Dango is our drummer, he just likes to be called Dango. He's out of uh, Nashville, uh, plays drums in a lot of different various type of acts, but he's committed to us and we love him and he's our beat master. And then our other guitarist and vocalist who does lead rhythm and vocals and is who's phenomenal. And Phil can speak more about him. He grew up with Phil in Toronto and just a great musician, a great guy, great family guy, Michael Vasso. So we'll still be a five piece uh, only changes our bass player, but he's played with us already before. So. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Phil, I wanted to ask you one more uh, slight Bon Jovi question, basically, and you probably get this a lot, but since it's my first chance to talk to you, I kind of wanted to ask you myself, um, and correct me if any of this is wrong, but you were basically in that band and touring for about, I want to say, two years before it was officially announced that you were an official member of Bon Jovi. So I'm wondering what that was like for you mentally. Was it difficult at all playing from show to show and going, hey, am I in the band? What's going on? Or or did you feel like that was some sort of two-year audition process or was it just something that just, you know, didn't bother you at all? Um, you know what? I, I, I didn't want to be the guy, you know? Um, I didn't, I never felt like, and I still don't feel like a member. I'm a member. I feel, you know, like it's a very interesting concept to be, uh, you know, buy my own tickets to see the New Jersey tour in Toronto, Canada and see any stadium and watch that band. And if somebody would have said, hey, you're going to be playing with those guys in a bunch of years, I'd be like, you're crazy, you know, because you never think you're someone's going to leave a band like that. Right. So, I mean, it just seemed like uh, it, one foot in front of the other, you know, like I feel like uh, in 2013 I filled in for Richie thinking he was going to come back. Um, 2014, he officially quit. 2015, we just did some dates in the, in the Pacific Rim. And then uh, in, in, at the end of 2015, John was like, you know what? A singer, a keyboard player, and a drummer don't make a rock band. Do you want to be the guitar player? <laughs> and, it was, and it was like, 
well, man, I thought you just guys were going to be like the three amigos forever. I was just going to be around, you know, along for the ride. But when that went down, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty amazing. And then he took it a step further and he thought, well, he couldn't bring me on board as a guy if he didn't bring Hugh McDonald on board as a guy. So that solidified the five dudes on the album cover. <laughs> so it, you know, I never, ever, and I think that's why the fans accepted me really early on because uh, there was a tweet like, you know, people, the media kept saying Phil X replaces Richie Sambora. And I just kept saying, I kept tweeting, you know what? I'm not replacing no one. I'm just helping the band out, do some shows. RS will be back. And I think the fans were like, oh, he doesn't want to replace Richie. He's just helping our band out. What a cool dude. And it, it kind of went like that. You know, and it's funny because I'm so not a copycat. I've always never been a copycat. Like I, if I copy someone's licks, I turn them into my own. If I copy someone's a bit of someone's style, like my icon, I always change it so it sounds more like me. And but in this sense, you know, Richard Fortis, who's been in Guns N' Roses forever, he just put he just made a shirt that said, I don't know where Izzy is. And I'm like, damn, I wish I could have thought of that. I would have had a shirt that said, I don't know where Richie is. Because obviously early on, even in 2013, even back the first time in 2011, there were people holding up signs saying, where's Richie? So that would have been genius if I had a shirt that said, I don't know where Richie is. So I'm jealous of, I'm, I'm jealous of Richard's, uh, his uh, genius there. Awesome. <laughs> Very well put. Uh, before I let you guys go, Kurt, uh, I got to ask you about this movie franchise thing you got going on, this uh, horror film flick. Plus, uh, apparently, uh, you know, you've uh, got some credits here with John Travolta and Michael Myers. I don't want to give too much away by uh, when I could actually have you, the source, explain it all to people out there. So can you kind of deliver the goods on your uh, movie background and what you have upcoming with that? Yeah, yeah. I, the whole reason I'm here right now and why I got back in inter entertainment, I kind of quit doing stuff when I was 20. And I went down to do a cameo in seven, end of 17 in this John Travolta, Shania Twain, Toby Sebastian from Game of Thrones movie, Trading Paint. And I was just supposed to be presenting a check. Uh, but then all, they offered me on the spot a speaking role. They said they needed a track announcer. So next thing you know, it's lights, camera, action, hundreds of people around me in this big cheer, cheer scene. I'm interviewing Toby Sebastian, John Travolta, just staring at me, giving his emotional face, how proud he is. It's like tripping me out. But I could do it in front of these cameras, and I loved it. And then uh, two months later, I get cast to get killed by Michael Myers as the gas station teller in Halloween, got a speaking role in the real sequel to the original one with Jamie Lee Curtis. And while I was there that whole day with this big prosthetic on my face and just covering it up with a towel because we were out in public, I'm thinking, man, I could do a horror franchise because the original Halloween was very low budget. And, you know, they were painting the house, the whole cast and crew, Jamie Lee Kurt. And I'm like, I can do this. So I came up with the concept uh, with some people out of uh, Alabama and uh we had a script written called Hellbilly Hollow, and uh, we shot a great movie on camera. And then once we were done, it was like nobody really, I could tell nobody really knew how to really do this pro and what to do with it. So I kind of took it under my wing. I said, this is the first one of my franchise, like the original Halloween. And Hellbilly Hollow is going to be one that continues to go on forever. So it's done now, finally, after getting it all right. The trailer just kicks ass. Uh, we got a poster coming out here soon, and uh, my management's going out to distribution. We've already got horror partners. They're already booking me at horror conventions, and I got this crazy psychopathic character that I play that hopefully is going to become iconic in the horror um, genre, and we'll continue on with him for as long as we can. So I'm pretty stoked, man. And we also feature seven of our tunes on the soundtrack, three of which nobody's heard, and then some off of our current EP, War Card, Rock Card. Awesome. Well, guys, I can't thank you enough for uh, going into the pit with me here for Alamo True Metal. Can't wait to see you at the show and rocking hard. Thursday, September 15th at the Aztec Theater. 
opening for Tesla. Uh, tickets are available on my website, alamotruemetal.com. Just click on the concert listings portion and buy your tickets and see you out there at the show. And Kurt, I got to let you know, the um, on your website, on your media portion, you've got you know several places having covered you, written articles, interviews, TV station stuff um, on you know um, putting your name out there. And one of the ones that you have on there was an article from News 4 here in San Antonio that you have on your website. In that article, they at the very bottom shared a video clip from your gig at the Aztec in case you didn't know that video clip was filmed by me. So uh, even though I don't uh -huh. work for News 4, W. They took my video and put it on the on your clip there. So I just wanted you to say, hopefully I'll be able to shoot some more in a couple of weeks and uh, we'll rock out together. Oh, dude, I can't, I can't wait to see you, man. Thank you for promoting uh, the fact that we're going to be back in San Antonio to play for all of you. And uh, we, yes, shoot away and just <laughs> let Chip and management know and shoot away. And I can't wait to see you again, brother. And I really, really do appreciate my heart that you're promoting up that we're going to be there. Thank you so much. And make sure you tell yes, sir, and the Jess the Kills band to be there so we can all hang out. All right. Hey. That sounds like a great yes. Can't wait. Safe travels. Good luck with everything, Phil. Thank you so much as well. Again, Kurt Dimer opening for Tesla Thursday, September 15th at the Aztec Theater here in San Antonio. They're also playing Dallas, Midland, Lubbock. Um, so Woo. go check them out throughout Texas. Thanks again, guys. Thank you so much again for going into the pit. Don't hang them out to dry, folks. Hold them up high. Thanks Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you. See you, Bye -bye. Thanks, man. See ya.